Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor and I just got done going on an hour walk run and got hungry so I just had, had a Diet Dr. Pepper and some beef jerky. How about them apples? Um, let's see, the, the news this afternoon, has, for some reason it seems extremely quiet on the XRP front. I like it when it's quiet because when it's quiet I get that gut feel, that that warm and fuzzy gut feeling about things. Um, th the things have been very flat um, in that 30 to 32 cent range for XRP for quite some time now. XRP has been quiet for longer than most of these digital assets, and I'm telling you, I just get this, <laughs> I just get this feeling um, that that uh, we are at a at an interesting moment in time right now. Okay, XRP James T at XRP James um, sent me this. This was a tweet from Ripple today. Um, pick your panels um, for SXSW um, 2020. Vote for Spring, Raised in Space, and Coil to see them share new use cases for digital currencies that span everything from payments to music. Um, and I, this this is interesting. You can go and click on on this link, and um, you can go and, and uh, vote for that. Um, next, uh, this is I love this guy's handle. Um, he kind of describes uh, uh, the reason, uh, a good reason, or or really the reason that you should hold XRP, even if you even if you fell in love with the Bitcoin thing. He says, about one-fourth of my crypto holdings are in XRP. The other three-fourths are in Bitcoin. While I love Bitcoin, I think XRP is a powerful hedge against the anarchistic, anti-bank, anti-government nature of Bitcoin. Governments have an increasingly powerful knack for suppressing anarchy. That's why I XRP. Well, I would say it another way. I, I am basically the flip I'm probably more like four-fifths in XRP instead of Bitcoin and the reason I am is because all of these things that he said there's a in my opinion there's a much like a 99.99 percent higher likelihood that the governments of the world figure out a way to come out of this and harness it and control it and for that reason, as a 45-year-old man, I believe the smart play um, is XRP by a long shot, not Bitcoin. Bitcoin plus, on top of that, Bitcoin is a lesser technology. It's a lesser everything. It, it doesn't even have a captain at the helm. Rip, XRP has Ripple as a main use case, and Ripple has a CEO. They have a whole team of people who wake up every day with the idea of employing the largest use case for XRP and then creating other use cases for XRP. <laughs> Am I crazy here? I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, I've said it many times. If I was 16 or 18 when uh, right now and I, and I was getting into all of this, I would be like, yeah, let's march for Bitcoin because I'm no big fan of governments either. I think that they're, I think what they've done to the I think that what the governments and the central banks have done to our money and to and to finance in general has been awful. But I'm also I'm, I've also been around and I know how the world works and the world does not work where we all get around governments somehow. This doesn't happen, folks. Doesn't happen. It's not going to happen this time either. Um, okay, this I thought this was a great tweet. This is something I have said before. Uh, when I'm watching CNBC or the, some of these financial channels and getting angry. Um, these guys sit on there and they talk about Bitcoin forever, but they don't ever do what this journalist did. For the sake of investigative journalism, I opened a wallet and received, sent some Bitcoin for the first time in my life 
and the result, I'm addicted. This is amazing. But seeing what I'm investigating makes me remain skeptical, which is how, I, how a journalist should always feel. I've said something similar to this before, folks, and that is that when in 2013, I remember sending Bitcoin or whatever, a digital asset, on a Sunday night and watching it go from one place to another, and I remember having this exact same feeling. She's, a, I'm, I'm addicted, and this, this is part of the reason that I, that I'm always remaining with all of you guys talking to you so bullish, because I know that 99.9% .9 of the population has not even done what Celia Wan has done. They have not sent. I know that Warren Buffett has not sent Bitcoin yet, or he wouldn't be running his mouth about how awful it is. If he had sent it, I think he's just an old man who's 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 uh, his time has already passed, and he has no interest in, in in investigating it at all. But I think all these journalists, like on CNBC, they have an obligation to do what Galgatron says: try the same with XRP and compare the two experiences. Use Toast Wallet to send between two addresses. It is instant, folks, to, to do what he's describing here. Toast Wallet to a Ledger Nano S or a Ledger Nano S to a Toast Wallet. It happens like that, folks. And and the reason it happens like that is that you don't have the you don't have an exchange involved, so there is no delay or anything. It just happens. And so some of these, and we need to encourage some of these journalists to do what she's done. Some of these people on CNBC that won't mention XRP, someone needs to put it in their face. Why don't you send some Bitcoin live on your shows? Send some Bitcoin and then send some XRP at the same time. And let's see what happens. Let's see the impression that is made to the world. So this is a great thing right here. Okay, next from uh, Esoteric Trading Solutions, that's Susie Trader. If you don't um, follow her, you should. She is a smart lady. Um, she's from Australia and has a financial background. Nations are cut cutting interest rates. Trade and currency wars, yet U.S. equity markets are near all-time highs, is way overvalued and not sustainable. This is the calm before the storm. We will see a switch to XRP, and BTC will seem to be less volatile than fiat, all food for thought. Exactly right, folks. Okay, um, this is the Ledger. The Ledger people that uh, sell the Ledger Nano S's, they put this out. Ledger Live version 1.13.2 is here. This new version lets you bookmark accounts, providing quick access to your favorite cryptocurrencies. You can download. So if you have the Ledger Live software, you can just click the update. Just open the software up and click the update button. And um, okay. And then this was a tweet from Donald Trump today. As, per, as your president, one would think that I would be thrilled with our, our very strong dollar. I am not. The Fed's high interest rate level in comparison to other countries is keeping the dollar high, making it more difficult for our great manufacturers like Caterpillar and Boeing, John Deere, our car companies, and others to compete on a level playing field. <laughs> there it is again. I'm not going to read you the rest of his tweet. But this is all about a level playing field. That that wording just keeps popping back up. Okay, and then I got this from Michael at VAL Five Links. This that's what happens when governments destroy their currency. Buying Bitcoin with Venezuelan Bolivar costs you six hundred dollars more than on global exchanges, according to local Bitcoin data. How, that is unreal, folks. These these people are paying six hundred dollars more. <laughs> to buy over there in Venezuela. And then I thought that this this tweet by Anthony Pompliano was really something that says it all and the and I thought that we all needed to read this out loud. Bitcoin is the best performing asset in the last decade. Now, I don't know if it outperformed XRP. That's worth looking at. But Bitcoin is the best say that out loud. Bitcoin is the best performing asset in the last decade and you don't think Wall Street is gearing up to bring everything they've got into this and then put their retail investors into it as well, you better believe it. Next, I got this, uh, I saw that uh, Steward XRP, at Steward underscore XRP had put this up, I thought this was interesting. Top three countries running XRPL nodes are USA, Japan, Germany. This is great, this is great information right here. Um, USA has 265. 
let's see where Japan is on this list. Uh, Japan has 124. And um, who did he say the other one was? Germany. And then Germany comes in at 108. But look how those nodes are spread around the world. Singapore's got 66, South Korea 72. This will just continue to spread out, folks. And this is this is good stuff. Okay, um, th I thought this was awesome. Um, this is from Rudy. If you want to go look, at, watch this commercial. This is from at Ru Rudy Havenstein. Let's light this candle. This is in 1999 at the height of the dot com bubble, folks. This was an e. This was an a, not e trade, but an Ameritrade commercial. And they, they uh, were talking about how this was the cutting edge and they were going to change the world. And this was the idea of going on. Before then, a lot of you young people don't realize this. Before this time period, you couldn't go on, on a website and buy stocks and bonds. That was, un, that was unheard of. You couldn't do that back then. This was when it first started. I, if there has ever been a parallel between what is happening right now you are about to start seeing commercials where people are going online just like this and the world's about to change and they're going to be talking about how you can you can go online and you can buy bitcoin and and it's going to be like this a guy an older guy do, sitting at the computer what this commercial was was it's an it's an older guy sitting at the computer and he gets this younger guy to to walk in and help him sit down uh, at the computer and buy stocks on on Ameritrade. This was when websites were first getting started, folks. This is these are the kind of commercials you're going to be seeing with digital assets, Bitcoin, XRP. They're probably going to have similar commercials to this, where it's an old person sitting down at the computer and a young person's having to show them how to buy digital assets. The world is about to change, and let me show you. I can prove it. Russell O'Kung, who's in, uh, I think he's in the NFL, yeah, game day, new undershirt shirt, who dis? And he's got a Bitcoin t-shirt on. And he's the guy that was wanting to get paid in Bitcoin, as I recall, recall. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that adoption is on the way. Thanks for listening.